The truth is preferred to be known, but what is the truth? That is often refutable. You often need to use correct reasoning to make a good argument. Logic is discipline that studies the distinction between correct reasoning and incorrect reasoning by determining the conditions under which the truth of certain beliefs leads naturally to the truth of some other belief. An argument consists of two or more phrases called propositions. It's in our nature to argue, in a way. Propositions are typically declarative and can be true or false. Sometimes we don't know if it's true or false, but we can always be sure it is one or the other. In an argument, these propositions relate to each other such that all the propositions prior to the conclusion are called premises, provide support for the, the conclusion. The transition from premises to conclusion is the inference. Arms do not grow back if they are chopped off. <coughs> my arm got chopped off, therefore my arm won't grow back. In this argument, arms do not grow back and my arm got chopped off are the premises, and I concluded that my arm won't grow back. The inference here would be that since my arm got chopped off, my arm won't grow back. A good argument must be consistent, which means none of the premises contradict another. Another valuable property is soundness. A sound argument means that the system's rules of proof will never allow a false inference from a true premise. If a system is sound and its axioms are true, then its theorems are also guaranteed to be true. An example of a sound argument would be all fish can swim. All sharks are fish. Thus all sharks can swim. An unsound argument might be bats can fly. Animals that can fly are birds. Bats are birds. A good argument to have is a deductive argument. An argument is said to be deductive if the truth of its premises guarantees the truth of its conclusion. Deductive arguments hold a very high standard of correctness. This is a rock-solid way of making a point. A deductive argument succeeds if its premises provide absolute support for its conclusion. To legally drive, you need a driver's license. I legally drove from work to the bar. Clearly, I have a driver's license. It would be horribly inconsistent that the premises are true, but the conclusion is false. I can't read while the TV is on. I read the entire dictionary last night. Aberrant. Aberration. The TV was on all night. Abeyance. Abhor. Abhorrence, abhorrent, abide, abiding. Here's another example of a deductive argument. I have to write an outline for class. Dr. Powell receives all outlines via email. Therefore, I have to email my outline. Another valid argument is an inductive argument. An inductive argument is said to have a conclusion that is true if the premises are probable or likely. Inductive arguments succeed if there is legitimate evidence for the truth. Every time I go to the doctor's office, he asks me if I have had any problems with my medication. So the next time I go, he'll ask me the same question. No inductive argument is either absolutely perfect or entirely useless. Another example of an inductive argument would be something like, my pet salmon number one jumped out of its tank and died from lack of water. Pet salmon number two also jumped out of its tank and died. 
And my next pet salmon is probably going to jump out of its tank and die, sadly. I can't seem to keep my salmon in the tank. Reductio ad absurdum literally means reduced to absurdity. Proof by contradiction is what some may call it. You can look closely at an idea and find some way to make it contradictory. We use this device whenever, instead of arguing that a position is untrue, we examine what would follow if it were correct in order to derive unacceptable results. According to Plato, Zeno was the first philosopher to employ it. A good example is Zeno's paradoxes of Achilles and the tortoise. In a race between Achilles and the tortoise, Achilles allows the tortoise a head start of, let's say, 10 meters. When Achilles reaches the 10 meter mark, there is a problem. The tortoise has run 2 meters, placing him ahead. Achilles runs 2 more meters, and the tortoise has advanced a little further. Achilles cannot catch up because when he reached the spot that the tortoise was at, the tortoise has advanced further. It is impossible for Achilles to catch up to the tortoise. Achilles cannot possibly get further than the tortoise when he aims for the spot the tortoise was at, because once he gets there, the tortoise has always been moving, so it has moved further than that spot. Another paradox takes place on a track. Achilles has to first reach the half point before he can finish the race. Once he reaches that point, he has to reach the new halfway point between where he is now and the end of the race. Achilles will never be able to reach the finish line, and he will run literally forever, because there is an infinite amount of halfway points to reach. This also means that the race could never start because you can think of it as a problem where he has to get halfway to the halfway mark and then halfway to that mark until you're dividing inches in front of him and ultimately he can never leave the starting line because there is an infinite amount of halfway points just to get halfway to the finish line. An example of reductio is to say theft is not universal because if everyone were a thief, no one would truly own anything that could be stolen. Aristotle's writings on the general subject of logic were grouped under the name organon, or instrument. Logic and reasoning could be seen as the chief preparatory instrument of scientific investigation. Aristotle himself, however, uses the term logic as equivalent to verbal reasoning. The categories of Aristotle are classifications of individual words, as opposed to propositions, and include the following ten, substance, quantity, quality, relation, place, time, situation, condition, action, and passion. They seem to be arranged according to the order of the questions we would ask in gaining knowledge of an object. For example, we ask first what a thing is, then how great it is, next of what kind it is. Substance is always regarded as the most important of these. Substances are further divided into first and second. First substances are individual objects. Second substances are the species in which first substances are individuals in here. Nagarjuna claim that reality can never be demonstrated by words. He uses an example with fuel and fire. When adding fuel to the fire, at which exact point will the fuel stop being fuel and become fire? There are many logical points